Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview. My name is Joseph. Do you believe that plants have brains and can think and learn just like us? In fact, in the philosophical world, there's an ancient belief that all things in this world are inhabited by souls and are intelligent. For some scientists, however, this is not something they believe. They think it's impossible. Plants don't have the physical structure of a brain, so how could it possibly think? Well, our program today will provide the evidence, as we found it, that plants can not only think, but in certain regards, they even have greater powers than humans. Scientists made an observation during the mid-19th century. If a plant falls over, it would deliberately shift the growing direction of its root until reaching into the ground. Meanwhile, the tip of the plant would search for the sky and slowly grow towards it. When a plant is moved to a spot where the sun shines from a different angle, then it would grow leaves and flowers towards this new angle. We've all seen this phenomenon and it always demonstrates how amazing life is to me. This made scientists wonder, is there a brain inside the plant that commands these adaptive responses? So the question is, if this part of the plant is cut off, would the rest of the plant become unresponsive to changes in the environment? Scientists began to experiment by cutting off different parts of the plant. After hurting multiple plants, they came to a conclusion. Its brain is likely to be hidden in two places, at the tip of its root, and at the tip of its stem. The plant would lose its sense of direction after these parts were taken off. So if it's true that plants have a brain, do they have the ability to summarize and learn just like us? You don't say, they really do. Scientists believe that the Venus flytrap is the smartest plant in the world. Some neuroscientists think that there must be a brain hidden inside the plant because they discovered that the Venus flytrap could count. We usually imagine a Venus flytrap snapping shut at once when an insect touches its sensory hairs, but this isn't actually the case. If an insect lands on the sensory hairs and then stays still, then the Venus flytrap wouldn't take action. But if the insect moves for a second time within the next 20 seconds, then the Venus flytrap would close. When the insect makes its third move of struggling, it triggers digestive enzymes to seep into the trap. As the insect struggles harder, the plant gains more confidence that it's captured its lunge, so it releases more digestive enzymes. This series of moves made against the insect reveal that the Venus flytrap can consciously count the number of times that its sensory hairs were touched. The plant's response to the insect is rational because it's based on the number of times it moves. Isn't this set of operations the work of a brain? There are scientists who disagree with this conclusion. They feel that the Venus flytrap is passively reacting to stimulation rather than actively making a decision. But just as the scientists with differing opinions argued endlessly, a botanist suddenly came up with an incredible finding. It was as if this botanist stood up to the skeptical scientist and said, stop arguing. Plants not only have memories, but they also have an amazing ability to learn. Her name is Monica Gagliano, an Italian botanist. Monica chose the mimosa plant for her experiments because of its intelligence, demonstrated from its rapid response to stimulation. She prepared a turbo drop for plants to scare the mimosa. As expected, after the mimosa plants were dropped one by one, they closed their leaves. She repeated the same drop 60 times. She found that after the fifth drop, the mimosa plants slowly started to adapt to the drop. After the 60th drop, however, almost all of the plants no longer closed their leaves. It seemed as if they could remember the feeling of dropping and concluded that it's harmless to them. Would the plants forget this memory after a while? Well, she dropped the same plants again a month later and still nothing happened. No folding. It's amazing. Monica's experiment showed that plants have memory and the ability to learn. Next up, she wanted to see how intelligent plants actually are. Could they be trained to understand commands like puppies, per se? When training a puppy, we wanted to understand the command, lie down. After giving the command, as the puppy moves into a lying down position, then he'd be rewarded a reward treat. Any dedicated dog owner would do this hundreds of times. In the puppy's brain, he would link the word lie down to this behavior, and he knows that a reward comes after. Finally, the dog would be trained to complete the command without getting a reward. This is called associative learning. Monica trained pea plants the same way using lights and fans. The lights would be the reward while the fans acted as the command. 
First, she put both lights and fans at the same direction towards the plant. Sure enough, the plants all grew towards this direction. After a while, the lights were removed, while the fans were moved to the other side of the pea plants. A magical scene happened. The pea plants actually started growing in the direction of the fans. Since plants are so intelligent, can they also communicate and pass on knowledge just like humans and other mammals do? What's next is fascinating. Forest ecology professor Suzanne Simard discovered that plants in the forest have a biological network in the ground. Each plant is like a computer. Mycelium acts as the network. Put simply, mycelium is the vast root network of fungi or mushrooms. There's mycelium throughout every inch of the woods. In fact, in one square foot in the forest, there's over 500 miles of mycelium beneath our feet. An amazing thing happens. When the root of a plant is connected to the mycelium, then it becomes part of this network. Once connected to the network, the stronger plants would take care of the weaker plants. The mature trees would pass on their extra nutrients to the weaker saplings in the distance through the underground network. The saplings that are connected to this network have a four times higher survival rate than the saplings that grow on their own. This might be why perhaps trees that are planted in a neighborhood alone tend not to survive as well as trees that are in a community. Suzanne referred to the mature trees that take care of the weaker ones as the mother trees. We all know that humans and animals love and care for their children, but how about plants? To find the answer, Suzanne planted two kinds of saplings at the same place. One kind of sapling is the same species as the mother trees, while the other kind is of a different species. The result is again fascinating. The saplings of the same species received more love and nutrients from the mother trees. The mother trees circumnavigated its roots away from those young saplings, giving them enough room to grow. It seemed as if the mother trees were worried about competing with the younger trees for nutrients, just like a loving mother would. Not only that, when the mother trees knew that their time had come, for example, when they got seriously ill or suffered from injuries that they could not heal from, they gave out signals and significantly increased the amount of nutrients that they transmitted to the underground network. This is much like our great ancestors who, before they fell, they didn't forget to hand over their work and share their knowledge and expertise with future generations. Well, that's it for today's story. What are your thoughts on it? Have you had any interesting experience with plants that have proven to you that they're intelligent, sentient beings? It seems that there's a certain truth in the belief that everything is inhabited by a soul. Perhaps the ancients had it right. Perhaps with the progress of mankind, when we learn more about plants and the world around us, we'll find that the world in front of us is completely different. If you have anything to share or would like to see future programs on any topic, please feel free to leave your comments below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.